In this video, we're going to take a look at the form builder, where we can edit and build new form templates to be used in your site docs account. First, we're going to select setup and then form template library. This page is where all of your form templates are stored and can be built and edited. Let's create a brand new form template. First, select the new form button. And now give your form a title. In this instance, we're going to call this your incident form. Now we have to choose what type of form this needs to be. We have two choices, standard and private. The difference here is that once the form is filled out and signed, a standard form can be reviewed by any worker assigned to the location profile where the form was filled out. If the form is private, it can only be viewed by administrators and the person who filled out the form originally using the device that they used to create the form. For instance, if I filled out a private form on my phone, I could not then review it on my tablet later. I'm going to select private as my incident report might contain things like injury details that other workers don't need to see. Now that my form is created, we're ready to get started. Any of the text fields in your forms are editable at any time. Simply click on the text you wish to edit, make the change, and then click outside the box or press enter to save the change. The gray bar at the top is a section header. These are really helpful for breaking up your form into usable blocks. Now that I've titled my section, I need to add some form items. You can see that we have a long list of options to choose from here. These include pass fail, a simple checkbox, long and short answer questions, and text info blocks. These are great for things like instructions or reminders. The field even supports links to websites like YouTube videos. Next, we have drop down lists. These allow your workers to select answers from a pre made list that you control. To create these, we need to jump over to the list manager. Because this is in a different screen, I like to click Setup, then right click on List Manager and open it in a new tab so that I don't have to close the current tab I'm working in. Now that we're in the List Manager, let's create a list to use in our incident form. In this case, I need a list of weather types. Now I know I need four options, so I'm going to select Add Item four times. Now I can click on the text to give these new items titles. So now you can see I have sun, overcast, rain, and snow. A great advantage to these lists is that they can be nested so that they have multiple levels. So I'm going to select the green plus button under snow and add a couple detailed options. We'll title them sleet and blizzard. Okay, now that we've built our list, let's jump back to our form builder and add it into our form. I'm going to pick select one, title it weather, and select my weather list that I just created. We also have the option to select multiple, just in case your workers need to select several answers at once, like in a list of hazards. Now let's take a look at the rest of the items that are available. We have a yes, no question, a manual pass fail counter, a field that only allows for numbers to be entered, items for selecting your date and your time, and items that allow you to select one or multiple names directly from the list of workers entered into your Site Docs account. Next is the GPS form item. While each form is automatically GPS stamped when it's signed, this item allows for a secondary GPS pin like for the location of the start of work or the place where an inspection was performed. Next, we have items for viewing image files and PDF files. These items allow you to upload an image or a PDF that your workers can view each time they fill out this form. With the image form item, they can even draw or add text to the image. So we could, for instance, upload a body diagram where they could circle the body part that was injured in an incident. Finally, we have the insert PDFs item. 
This item allows your workers to upload a PDF that is stored on their device into the form while they're filling it out. They can even select a resource file right from your library. This is a good start, but let's add a second section, maybe for a witness statement. Now I'm going to make this section collapsible so that if there were no additional witnesses, we can collapse the section because it's not relevant to us right now. However, in some situations, there might be multiple witnesses. So I'm also going to make it repeatable so that we can duplicate this section as many times as we need to in order to collect all the information that's necessary. Now I'm just going to quickly finish up this form to make sure that we have all the items we need. And now that the form is almost done, we want to make sure that a few of these questions can't be skipped. For instance, the name of the worker involved in my incident. To do this, we simply select the asterisk on the left-hand side of the item. Once the asterisk is read, it means that this item is now mandatory. All right, now we're done building our form. Just two steps left. First, we need to decide if we want to give the workers the ability to duplicate this form. What this means is that your workers would be able to duplicate a previously filled out form in order to copy the answers into a new version of this form. In this case, I want to make sure all my incident reports are started from scratch. So I'm going to select the settings wheel and deselect allow duplicates. Now that the form is completely finished, I need to make sure my workers can see the form in their application. So I'll select Back to Forms to take me to the form template library. This page will be formatted one of two ways. If your company is using custom app menus, and then select Edit above the Menu Preview window. From this screen, I can add the form to my worker's application either inside a list or inside a folder. In this case, I'm going to create a folder specifically for my incident forms. Next, I'll add this new form as well as my witness statement form into the folder. Finally, I'll save my changes. If your company's not using custom menus yet, but you'd like to, simply scroll to the bottom of the form template library and select Enable Custom Menu. That'll turn on the menu that we just used. If your company's not using custom app menus, then you can select the bubble next to the form that you want to send to your workers' apps and select Set Active in the bar at the top of the page. Now let's take a look at the form in the application. In this case, I'm going to use my web app since I'm already sitting at my computer. So now I can fill out the form that we've created. I can select my worker involved. I can pick weather from the list that we created. I have drop down lists for incident type and cause. I can indicate whether or not somebody was injured. From my select multiple worker option, I can pick several workers who were injured. I can select where they were injured. And with my injury diagram, I can even circle the parts of the body that were injured during this incident. Finally, at the bottom, we have our witness statement. Now you'll notice that the section is collapsed. And so I can click the drop down arrow on the right hand side to expand the section. Now I can enter my witness name, my witness statement, and my witness's phone number. Now if I have a second witness, I can click the blue repeat section button to create a second section where I can enter in the second witness's information. If I create too many of these sections, I can click the trash can icon in the top right hand corner of the section to remove the extra section. And there you have it. Now you can see just how easy it is to rebuild your paper forms into your SiteDocs account and make them easier, faster, and better. If you have any questions about our form builder or anything else in our program, please reach out to our wonderful support team at support at sitedocs.com.